When we moved here 10 years ago, our vision was to plant a church that brought the life-giving water of Jesus to a thirsty city. And it all started right here in this apartment. When we moved here January 4th, 2011, Kim and I actually hadn't even seen this apartment. Our friends who were already here doing ministry and, and loving people uh, went and checked out this apartment and, and, and picked it out for us. And so we moved in off the mission field to start here. And what we started here was just started studying the scriptures together, praying together and considering how we could minister to people in this town. When we started, we didn't have any kind of budget for social media or signage. And so all we could do is put a sign on our door that said, welcome, come on in. This is where the well meets. I don't even think we had a logo established at that point, but we did have a vision and heart for this town. We saw marriages renewed, we saw relationships healed, and we saw people encountering the gospel for the first time. And we quickly outgrew this space and had to find a new space to minister to more people in this town. The first time we came to the well was for um, an Easter service actually in 2013. A mutual friend between Ari and me had mentioned the well and so we decided to come check it out. and. Uh, we really liked the service and when we decided to move to Broomfield we tried several churches in Broomfield we went and visited and so we tried to find something close and just we really didn't feel God's presence anywhere like we did at the well and we decided that a 20 minute commute was going to be worth it. It was, yeah, we definitely felt God's presence at the well. As you know, the Well Church started in Chase's apartment. Uh, we quickly outgrew that area. And when I moved here in April of 2011, shortly after that, we moved to this apartment here, um, the place that I was li living in, and we moved here. One of the main reasons that we did that was we actually needed kid space. And my place actually had, an, had a basement, which worked out well for us for kids. And so we decided to make the big move and move the well from Chase's apartment over here to North Boulder and move into this apartment right behind me. We actually put balloons, orange balloons, outside in front of it so that people could find it. That's how people uh, located us. We weren't doing any other marketing because we didn't have any other money. But uh, it, it was a time in our church that I look back to do with a, a deep level of fondness in, in kind of a strange way. Our church was uniquely simple, but it was beautiful. And the church grew, and we actually outgrew the space in a fairly short period of time, and that was kind of our entrance into getting into our own place that was not an apartment, that was actually a church building. Well, I remember the first day I walked into the well, and I just saw everybody, and they're normal people, you know, very approachable. People would say hi. Um, I didn't have to pretend to be anything. And I love that Man and Chase aren't afraid to be bold. Uh, we're a church that really is, is rooted in the gospel. Uh, it doesn't feel like there's this, uh, this church that says one thing and does another. Um, and I'm really proud of that. One of the reasons we go to the well is that it is gospel-centered. And um, it's not a lot of... Uh, not a lot of fluff or, um, you know, extra stuff. It's, it's just, this is what the Bible says and this is how we apply it to our lives and, and there's no sugar coating on it and that's, there doesn't need to be, so. I think the most special thing about the well to me is um, the authenticity of the people that go there. Um, I've been to lots of churches um, that did not, I, we didn't feel connected to the people because it was very surface level and, um, you know, put on the happy face, but then nobody wanted to get real. Um, and we really appreciate that about our community mm -hmm. at the well. When we moved here in 2012, we left Matt's apartment and we moved into Wesley Chapel up here by campus. And it was such a fun time for our church to move in our, into our first facility that felt like a church building, even though when you walked in, it didn't really look like a church building. There was all sorts of stuff on the walls that we covered up with bed sheets and there was no kids area. So we had to buy tents and we set tents up inside the building and each tent was for a different age group. But we had a lot of fun in this building. We saw lots of people come to our church and, and really check out the, the gospel 
gospel message for the first time. I grew up as a preacher in many ways in this church. In fact, there were a couple times I led worship at our church. That will probably never happen again, but it really makes for some great memories. And so we had a really good time at Wesley Chapel. We saw people get saved. We prayed for people. And we really saw a lot of people come to know the gospel in a deeper and richer way through our ministry here in this building. Towards the end of our time here, we actually had to go to two services. Even though the capacity in Wesley Chapel was only 100 people, uh, we went to two services and it was really at that time that we figured out, you know what, this isn't going to work. We're going to have to find somewhere else to meet. And that's what really sent us to Casey Middle School. Something I think is really special about the well is the community. Because uh, a big part of my journey, I found Christ at the well. Um, through uh, my first few interactions were with a small group of women. And in those groups, it was just amazing how vulnerable and how authentic people really were. And we really got to like dig in to what was going on in our hearts um, and share that with each other. So that kind of like intimate community was awesome and really like, you know, was the way, part of the way that I found Christ. Many of you who are familiar at the well remember Casey Middle School where I'm standing right now. This was such a big moment for our church to move from Wesley Chapel and all its kind of goofiness. It made it kind of cool for a church plant into a place that uh, had an auditorium, had legitimate kid space, and we were here for years until right before COVID. Being able to be here and gather in the heart of Boulder, right downtown with the beautiful views of the flat irons around us, um, just, just a couple blocks off of Pearl Street, all that came with that was a massive moment for our church. It was part of the thing that God used to accelerate the mission. And we even did so much stuff as, as being here gave us a mission to reach people in these nearby neighborhoods, which we did. We saw people from around here get saved. We've done baptisms out here. I baptized two of my kids actually right here behind me. And I've seen other people baptized here. It's been an awesome, awesome place for us. It was a beautiful time of our church history. And we're so thankful that God did provide uh, such a nice place for us to meet as a church and allowed us to grow in a healthy way that wasn't anything crazy, but in a way that really just benefited our church and ultimately served our community and brought more glory to God. Yeah, the well is the only reason, or maybe the biggest reason why I'm a Christian. I don't know if I would be down the path, at least as far as I am now, without the well, without the people of the well being so, so kind. Yeah, without that, I, I don't know if we would be married, if we would be, you know, continue to be Christian, so, yeah. You know, we've seen the gospel played out and like acted out through our brothers and sisters. And, um, you know, whether that's um, just helping us out, you know, personally, our family, um, and they've been there for us, uh, you know, when we've really needed them. And, and, and just seeing that played out has helped us grow as Christians and as a family. And, and currently we meet at a bar and like, that's not the, the bar's not the point, but the fact that we're so committed that by any means we're going to figure it out, we're gonna come together, uh, that, that means a lot to me, you know? And uh, that's something that I wanna rally, rally around and be a part of. Here we are, 2021, meeting at the Rayback Collective, and God has been so faithful to us throughout the years, and, and we are still meeting, which is something to say, given all that we've gone through as a church, especially in the last year and a half to two years. And so we're just so thankful to God that He's been so faithful to us in all that He's done. For sure, and we're so excited about the next 10 years of our church. You know, we're looking to buy a church home here in Boulder, and I can just imagine now all the lives that will be changed to the, the building God will deliver to us, all the disciples made, all the plant, churches planted all over the town, all over the state, all over the world that we're networked with and supporting. I'm so excited about what God is gonna do in these next 10 years. Yeah, Chase, and we've seen God do so much. And the one thing we've definitely seen is that the Well Church here in Boulder is a resilient church. It's a church 
church that can survive just about anything that gets thrown at it. And that's not because of, of our special talents or anything. It's because of the grace of God. And we've seen it move so much in our community. And we're so thankful for all of you who've been part of it and helped make this mission go forward. So we're excited about the years to come and all that God has for us that we don't even know he's working on to come in the next phase of our church.